Greetings, this is Dr. Mike Duran. Welcome to my January 24th, 2022 update. Topic number two secret to pushing hands power development in Tai Chi, standing meditation, John Zhuang, etc. The goal behind my design is to provide you with a stable foundation in certain rules that will ensure steady growth. That includes the acquisition phase while you're taking the training, but more important, to take that information into your private practice and grow with it in a steady fashion. One of the most important things that I want to minimize are misinterpretations or erroneous conclusions drawn from the training. That's why I put so much energy into designing a system that is as foolproof as possible. And that required... Uh, in terms of my personal growth, that I sift through my many years of training in the traditional fashion and cut through so that we could really be on the same page regards eliminating a lot of the guesswork that comes from the traditional learning, which includes a certain dynamic between the teacher and the student that in modern psychological terms that we would deem not healthy from the point of view of fostering individual strength, creativity, and problem-solving ability. I've implied this throughout all the episodes and updates, but it's within the pushing hands dynamic that the relationship really bears itself out. I can't tell you how many horror stories I've heard over the years of involvement as both a student and a teacher. It doesn't just apply to martial arts training or Taiji training. It applies to the earliest stages of education, beginning in preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, where it's commonly understood that one bad teacher in one grade could really offset a kid's development. Well, the same thing here in terms of our pursuit of these high arts having to deal with relationships. As a psychologist, I would say that even though discussion on this topic is minimized, suppressed, or swept under the rug, or simply argued away as traditional, we are in modern times, and the idea of individual power is very different from what individual power was back in the days of early China, even early in the early West. The authoritarian paradigm, while solid in terms of its basic principle, needs to give way now to a team spirit of communication, cooperation, complementarity, and principled competition. And let me focus on that last piece, because we know as people in the martial arts of how muddled learning can become when it is being infused with hidden dynamics. Well, Taiji Chen is no exception to this. And in pushing hands, I invite you to look at all your experience and to review how aware you have been of the interdynamics taking place while two people are striving to perfect these sacred skills. The consciousness that's needed for these for the highest level of skill that I described Yang Shou Jung as possessing in the earlier episodes and updates must be held as the standard. I'd like you to allow your imagination to run to an ideal state of a person who is detached from that level of competition-based consciousness, having attained a very deep grasp of the principles. So aside from the mechanics of power pushing hands, 
we need to keep in mind that your attitude and your dynamic between yourself and those you're practicing with, be they peers, be they students, or even people who are superior to you in knowledge and skill, that there's very specific roles that you can define so that you don't need to spend a lot of energy managing the relationship. So those four points that I, I just mentioned, communication, cooperation, complementarity, and principled competition, I'd like you to keep in mind as guiding rules for what a proper dynamic is between you and your partners. We're starting where we are with our present skill and our present habits, our present concepts of what correct pushing hands entails. This can set a new spirit to your entire practice. Taking the four C's, but especially the fourth, which is principled competition. Competition is a natural part of the training that will bring out your personal power or your warrior strength. There's a certain way that it's done that I've seen even high-level practitioners never able to perfect. And that is, there's a competition going on between you and another person, yet to commit yourself to principle, the pr a principled way of doing it, instead of focusing on the end result, that is, am I pushing them or are they pushing me? You have to understand, if you're after developing extraordinary awareness and capability, you need to raise your consciousness, and this is the blueprint that I've infused into the design of the training that has to do with your psychology and your self-awareness. When you're there pushing as hard as you possibly can to uproot someone, always maintaining a sense of principle. Doing it incorrectly can look one of two ways. One is you end up being too reserved and conservative. You're so focused on integrity that you don't let yourself come out. And the other is more the wild man who doesn't have a sense of integrity so much. They're going all out and they're just aiming to get the result. When I mentioned in the earlier episodes about Yang Shoujong possessing both embodiment and transcendence, I'd like you to, to regard that as an attainment, not something that you can choose to do at any time. It's the end result of all this work to truly embody the principles in skill and capability. Transcendence needs to be a part of that quality. And in order to transcend the physicality, there needs to be embodied. And this is very much an exclusively Chinese characteristic that I personally feel not just applies to Taiji trend, but is one of the biggest contributions in terms of personal cultivation culture that any human being can strive to acquire. The only way you'll be able to grasp the seed that you can plant and germinate and sprout, but then set the conditions in your training so that it continues to grow along the, the right path is to set up the right relationship with your partners. So I've frequently spoken of starting a school that is you plus a minimum of, of two other people. The conditions to allow the skill to grow in you will come by way of setting up the relationships according to the four C's, so that everyone is on the same page as to the, the rules of engagement of this type of practice, so that at some point it, they become automatic rules that everyone follows whenever you're together in training. Then, position one, I'm confident, can be over time attained with that essential grasp of where the source of power comes from. That's all I want to say for this segment. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please leave your comments or questions.
below or on the Facebook page. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this and share it with people who you think may be interested. Look forward to talking to you again. Take care.